everybody. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind of. I'm very happy to have Armia Abdo. Uh, Armia, as we met probably about four or five years ago, I don't know if it's that long, took a course out in San Diego and a man- manipulation course and loved it. Came back to, our, to New York and said to you know, our guys, we've got to have him out. He's been out to teach twice. It would have been more if it wasn't for the COVID going on. But we always have great feedback. And uh, I was talking to one of the guys this morning saying I was going to talk to you is Owen. He was like, tell how much I use this stuff, how much it made a difference in my career. And he's been out for a while. So that's a pretty big thing to say. A little bit more about uh, Armia is, is, is he's the founder and CEO of his own company, Doc Physio. Um, he's a doctor of physical therapy. He's an instructor. He's an author. He's a speaker, entrepreneur, uh, yoga person. We can go that. And it's probably more I missed a father, which is one of the most important jobs he has. Mm-hmm. Um, so a little bit about Dr. Physio. I mean, what I understand of it, it's a more uh, fully automated uh, PT platform, um, which teaches the patients to take their health in their own hands. So tell me more about that. First, welcome. And tell us a little bit more about your company. Yeah, thank you, Rob. It's a pleasure to be on. And tell Owen, thank you. It's always nice to hear positive feedback like that. So it's sure. really what makes the job most, uh, most exciting. Uh, but so Doc Physio, in, uh, the whole purpose, uh, this, this came about initially because doing physical therapy, I was practicing it in many different ways, but I felt like there is a missing piece to patient care, you know, and uh, that's why I wanted to create an automated physical therapy platform because I got to a point in my own career where I was uh, not able to see all the patients that were wanted to see me. So I had to, in essence, create something to provide them care without me physically treating them. So I tried to create a platform, or I did create a platform, Doc Physio, which is literally everything I would do for a patient minus the hands-on care. And uh, so what I really found the most beneficial is that right now, if a patient wants to get care, their options are virtual visits or uh, uh, in-person visits. And if you look at a lot of the numbers and stats, it shows about 50% of Americans or about 115 million have muscle and joint pain, but only 10% of them are seeking help. So what about that other 90%, you know, and unfortunately for us in the healthcare field, we're so limited by time, by insurances, by payments that it's very difficult to see somebody as long as we want to see them. But if we can get them in the door quicker, you know, before they are very difficult, expensive to treat, then um, that would make everybody's job a lot easier. And, and it would be so much more beneficial for the patient. So in my, in my mind, I see Doc Physio as an automated option that can be a stepping stone to virtual or inpatient care. We just need more resources to get, the, get people the help they need because although there, there are a lot of people who are using physical therapy, there's so many more who need it. Literally everybody needs it. Um, in some okay. form or another. So I wanted to provide an additional service that can be uh, attractive for people who otherwise wouldn't get the help they need. And in doing that, they'll become more aware and value what we all do as physical therapists um, uh, much better. And then so that would hopefully get them to get in the clinic when they need to and really uh, really make sure that they're okay and safe, you know, rather than waiting till they're a train wreck and they have to, they're forced to come in. So when does this start? Does somebody start? Will they go to Doc Physio before they see you, after they see you, during treatment? Like where does it fit in? Or uh, everywhere? So uh, if you're just talking about a standard person who's looking for help, uh, the easiest thing they can do is they can go on our platform and I, we have a free health assessment. So they would take this test and by using this test uh, and, and applying the algorithm that I've created for the whole body, um, I've been able to create treatment plans. So they can simply go on and take the test. They'll get a treatment plan. And if they want to subscribe for a month or a year, they can be able to access the treatment plan. And and one month is $30. So it's a very inexpensive way just to get your feet wet and get you integrated. And if you need more help, then of course, you know, the in-person or virtual visits would be the next step. But uh, many people just need that first level of care you know, that I feel like is missing in our healthcare profession. So uh, the easiest thing to do is you take the test for free and you'll get a free copy of my ebook and audio book just by registering. Uh, and then if you want the subscription and you want to actually uh, go through the treatment plan, then you can always uh, purchase a uh, subscription as well. Right. So as a manual therapist, how do you tell? It's always hard to say. We always think we have to do it. And it's important that the patient takes on responsibility, but it's always like, 
can you tell when when do they need you or they note they, they don't it's kind of a always a tough one right can i do it myself do i need your hands yeah and that's that's where that's what we're fine tuning with our um we're creating a bit of a funneling process so rather than because i never wanted to look at like us competing with physical therapy clinics because there's way more people out there who need help than actually we can provide service for you know so what i'm really looking to do is to give people the awareness and understanding about our profession and the the amazing things we can do with it so if they take our test, they're going to be scored. And based on their percent score, there's a recommended treatment plan. So if your score is low and uh, is so low, that means that your pain is probably constant, consistent, and maybe a little emotional and scary. Uh, so those are the people that we want to help funnel them into virtual care or uh, in-person care because, yeah, they may be able to use our, our platform, which would be beneficial, but odds are they're going to need more of a comprehensive um, uh, a treatment plan that's going to have to be guided by in person, you know, but most people, yeah. they, they, they don't take that initial step in the first place, maybe because they feel like it's very difficult, confusing, hard to get in the, to get funneled into the healthcare system. So this is a, a way just to get your feet wet, give you, um, give you some baseline education. And if it's effective enough to care for you, great. If not, we want to be able to use it to funnel you to the next place where you can get uh, a higher level of service that may be beneficial to you. So in your mind, almost like the idea, uh, you almost cross over like we came up with this algorithm. What was the process like? Because that must have been, it's, it wasn't, you made it sound so easy. We came up with this algorithm, but what, what's, what the, goes into a process of making an algorithm that could be that, that helpful? Well, it, it really comes back to personal experience. All of this stemmed from my own personal injury. So I had bad, a, a disc issue, terrible sciatica, to the point where um, I was walking up the stairs one day and my leg just stopped working. I was laying on the ground for two hours. You know, couldn't get up because my leg was just not working. And if you've ever been in a situation like that, it is damn scary. And mm -hmm. I, at this time, Technically, if you looked at my success in my career, working in a clinic, best clinic in the nation, uh, seeing this many patients, and yet here I was, the person taking care of so many people, couldn't even fix my own problem. Then I started realizing, well, what is it that, we're, that I'm missing? Because I have all the knowledge and tools to fix this. Maybe I'm just not applying it the right way. So I really let go of any preconceived notions I had and limitations I had. And once I started focusing on myself and what it took to get myself better and heal myself, I realized that the only way to get somebody better is to have a full body approach. And when you have a full body approach, um, there are predictable uh, uh, issues that show up in everybody. So if we can map out the body a certain way, we can determine what areas need to be fixed. And that's what I call, and I talk about this in the book, uh, criminal versus victim. Right? Because most of us, were, we feel the area that's victimized. The victim is the loud one. And that was, for me, that was my back and my static nerve saying, ah, I'm in pain, I'm in pain. But where's the criminal? Usually the criminal is quiet. So what I ended up finding was that a lot of my issues actually stem from my right ankle. And because my right ankle, that was an injury I had when I was maybe five or six years old, broke two parts of my ankle. So by default, I was always weighting my left side more. And then my left side had all these overuse injuries. I spent forever trying to fix it. And then once I took a step back and I was able to look at the body as a whole, I realized that uh, it's just all about shared work, you know, and one area is doing too much, another area is doing too little. And inside of the clinic and the models that a lot of us adapt, I was treating the victim. So under the right circumstances, the victim kept being victimized again and again and again wasn't until I started to fix the criminal that it started to, um, to change my body and my shape. And so then I realized, well, there's something to this. And then for the next two to three years in my private practice, I started applying this algorithm and then it showed itself. So I don't, I don't ever want to say that I, uh, or I created something. I, I observed how the body functions. Because if you observe what the body does, then you see consistent patterns. And then I've used that to guide my treatments and guide my treatment plans to the point where I can create a treatment plan for anybody based on this algorithm 
no matter where the pain is, what's happening, because all of us share the consistency in our shape and our function, you know, in regards to this algorithm. So it's a, it became a very powerful tool and this is where everything stemmed from. So if you had some, if I came in with a subacute or chronic issue, let's say upper neck stuff, you would say, let's see what the rest of the body says about that. Like when do you decide that it's going to be a whole body type approach or do you always do it? What if somebody comes with an acute injury? Do you treat that differently or is this more subacute or chronic? Well, uh, the way I look at it is that, okay, you're always looking for the criminal, but you can't ignore the victim. And the louder the victim is, the more it occupies the space in their mind, right? So you have to put out the fire at the same time. But I think what, a, and we're really good at that in our profession, right? We can put out fires, we can treat the victim, um, but because of the limitations with our insurances and prescriptions, we can't justify going after somebody's ankle for their neck. You know, so, right. but for me, working outside of the system, I, I don't have those limitations. So this is where I was able to observe these consistencies. So I always want to put out the fire, but I always have to be addressing the core issue even while I'm um, addressing uh, the, the victimized area. But if, the, if their yeah. neck, for example, is so, in so much pain, you have, to, you have to calm it down. You can't ignore that. So it's not like I just simply ignore the problem that they're complaining yeah. of. Uh, I'm, I'm addressing that, but I'm always addressing the core issue every visit. Because if I don't do that, this thing will be on repeat. And uh, yeah. They feel better, get worse, feel better, get worse. Yeah. You know, I Interesting. Tell you I, I like the on, I like the on fire thing. I'm going to use that. I'll put your name next to it. I'm going to use that with a little R next to it, with a circle. Yeah, you can see that. And this is a wisdom <laughs> to be shared. So you can you can do whatever you want with that one. Uh, but I, I, like, I like that saying. If, if I can, Rob, I'd like to share a, a quick story about a specific patient that fits that criteria exactly. So they sure. came into the clinic. Uh, this guy's neck was killing him. Now he already had an old fusion, uh, C5, C6. And this was about 10 years ago. Here he is in so much pain, like you couldn't even touch him. And he was assigned to another therapist. They came to me and asked me, hey, can you take a look at this guy? And okay. he was in so much pain. We had to first calm his pain down. That was visit number one, since I wasn't the treating physical therapist. He was at the point where he thought he might have to have um, another level uh, fusion, which is, you know, okay. unfortunately, off, you know, happens often. So we're trying to figure out, well, why is he always having this pain? And turns out that he had a certain posture and stance where he'd always kick one leg out. And he had an old ankle issue. That's why he, he always kicked his leg out because his ankle was so limited that it would deviate away from his body and he would dump the weight on the left side. And because of that, okay. he's walking around like this, but you know, we have a writing mechanism, right? So we're not going to walk around with our eyes like this. We're going to have to write our eyes. So this curve that he created because of his foot the zigzag pattern all the way up it was really limiting his neck range of motion creating a lot of stress in that area so i ended up addressing his foot um, and his hip that was uh that was creating that mm -hmm. deviation to begin with and after i did that everything i did to the neck um was extremely successful and uh and effective and long lasting so imagine if I, got, I, I put out the fire in the neck, right? But he's still walking around like this. He's going to be back in a week, in a month. In fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that became, that was the first instance that I saw that, but that was in clinical practice, right? And that was the ankle to the neck. And then I started realizing, okay, well, our bodies are so integrated and connected. Like what other patterns are there that I can see? And then I started to see uh, uh, predictions that, that were just consistent, you know? So it really became extremely powerful. And then I put a model to it that made it very easy. So it took a lot of the, the critical thinking out of it. It's just check these points. And if they're limited, fix them. And then wherever they're hurting, uh, you should see that area improve. Yeah. Do you go to the most limited, like the osteopathic idea, the, the one that has the most restricted to first, do you prioritize or is there, like, how do you look at it? You do all the testing, which is more like joint mobility testing, if I remember right create it yeah. and then you go by what region has the most and you treat it that way how do you prioritize what what do you do first second so we all have stuff yeah we all have find stuff. That. and it's usually from the ground up um i have to treat things because imagine this imagine if uh you have a penthouse in in, in some building in some hotel and they're the the weight-bearing pillars are always cracking 
right? So if I keep fixing that, it's going to crack again and again. So the reason it's tipped in the first place is because of the base, you know, the, the, the foundation. And all of our foundation, the lowest part of my assessment or the beginning is the first toe, um, right? The first MTP, because if, if that's not lined up right, then you're going to see a ripple effect all the way up the body. So if I correct something up here, uh, this is going to undercut me. That toe is going to cause that same stress to come back. So I always start from the bottom up. Um, and then right. if you correct it like that, and you'll be amazed. I've had some people, I, there was a year where I was really into all of this stuff and I was practicing it a lot, but I haven't done it. I didn't do it long enough where I felt like I was 100% sure of myself. So I'd always doubt. I was like, could this really be true? And every time it, I, it proved true to the point where I was like, okay, if I really improve this guy's ankle, will his neck rotation improve? So I started like being systematic with my testing. Fix the ankle, right. retest. Fix the hip, retest. And what I found is that... Right, mate, right. Yeah. yeah, and what I found is that, yeah, it's the whole body always affects the, the area in pain. Now, sure. depending on how stiff it is, that is usually the percent that affects it. So if your ankle on my scale is minimally um, limited, then it probably will only have a limited improvement on the, the victim. You know, sense. so you're looking right. for the, the real high restrictions, but you still can't skip the ankle that is minimally restrictive to go after the hip that is uh, significantly restrictive. You still have to correct okay. everything from the ground up. How quickly will you get, so it's, I would almost imagine that you get percent of stuff, foot and ankle, sub joint, knee, and you finally, how far will it take you to get up the chain? Like will you continually pelvis, thoracic, lumbar, or will you kind of skip around or you definitely will just keep going up the chain as a priority, up the chain, that type of thing? Yeah, I'll go up the chain and I will correct everything on the way up. And that's one of the reasons why um, I value spinal manipulation, which is something, you know, that I, that I teach as well, because th that's a lot of work, you know, so any, anywhere I can have a highly effective tool um, to create the results I want quickly, I need that in my tool belt because I'm trying to change your, I'm trying to mold and sculpt your whole body. So if I can do things quickly, I need the right tools. It's like power tools. You know, I can get the job done right. quickly because I have a big job to do now. So that's my biggest thing is that I feel a thousand percent confident in this algorithm and this model. What I'm really trying to do now is continue to always improve my skill set so I can get results quicker and faster. So I know the area I want to treat, but are there other ways, other techniques, other tools that I can do to get this area to release quicker? And that's where um, learning all the different various types of uh, physical therapy out there becomes very beneficial. Right. Have you, I know you have this system. So have you been teaching this system yet or kind of it's out there? I know we've talked about it. I just was the last time we talked about that system. I know it was computerized. It was pretty cool to see. Yeah. But when does everybody else get to enjoy that? Do you have plans for that coming up or? Well, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to scale this system because right now I've, I have such a feel for this system that if other people were to do it, I, I'm worried about the, the reliability, right? That's always one factor. Right. And then the ability to teach us, but unfortunately it, it doesn't jive well with the, the insurance and the, our testing models right now. So it may be difficult to absorb. So I'm trying to figure out, well, what's an easy way that I can implement this testing? And so the next venture with Doc Physio, right now we have our treatment plans and we have questionnaires to get you that treatment plan. But what we're gonna add yeah. in the section of assessment is uh, a scanner, a 2D scanner, where I can scan your shape and posture. And we're gonna use AI and things like that to help uh, fine tune it. So what I'm trying to do is put the knowledge that I have with the, the model into a scanner. That way, it now you don't have to learn all this. I can teach people the philosophy and the concepts, but when it comes to the direct assessment, it's like, okay, use this scanner. It will save you time, energy, effort, and it can tell you immediately create a roadmap of where to treat. And so you have people go through like static or just you have them do it through motions. Like here's a pronation, do pronation, supernation, do, and then scan it. Or you just kind of, how will you, as a general person, or you'll scan like an area, do a motion, and the computer will figure out. Right now, the motion is be scanning a full body in a static position. Now, that, that, yeah. that is a little different than our current physical therapy model where we want to um, look at movement. But one of the things I found is that people who are very skilled at movement, very good at compensating, especially athletes, 
um, who are in great shape, their motor control is off the charts. So if I ask them to move, they can, they can figure out how to do the movement even with a dysfunction. And so they can hide their problem really well. But a static position where their mind is not in the game, we take the mind out. Just let me see what position your body's in and what shape and mold it's in. And that, uh, and that pattern is consistent with my measurement pattern, right? So if I can, if I can mm-hmm. scan you like that, I can see what kind of resting tension you have on your body and what are all these slings, where are they pulling you when you're just lying there? Where are the force, the forces on your body? And so really that's what I'm trying mm-hmm. to release is this, the resting tension on your body so you have the freedom of movement. And then the coordination mm-hmm. can be taught in many different ways. So interesting point I should introduce. I think a friend of mine who lives in San Diego that's great, who does, they do the laser analysis type stuff. We'll, we'll talk more. I think we've talked about it a little bit, but that'd be cool. Yeah, yes. There's a lot stuff. of um, So what do you think? So here's, you know, it's cool stuff. And we might say, you know, you and I, I love the whole body approach and the whole idea of it. What do you tell somebody new learning this stuff? Like, where do they start? And, or, you know, do you have advice for younger therapists? Because we have a lot of young, you know, we have our experienced guys who like, I either know or have an idea of it or, you know, or the younger guys who love to do it, but they're so in school, we're taught, here's your neck, here's your knee. You yes. know, we're trying to teach more, you know, than the hip and the ankle, but we still, and I try to add in the whole body approach with stuff, but then try to get them to get the basic concepts and to try to build on it. So what, do you, what kind of, either for a teacher, you know, what kind of recommendations for me to teach them or for you to teach them, like how do you, how do you start looking at it as a global clinician? I think it's important yeah, just how to do it. There's a few barriers when you consider that because the stuff I'm talking about is integrating many different body parts, right? But if you don't have a good understanding of all these different pieces yet, it's hard to now think about, if you don't understand the neck fully, it's hard to connect it to the forearm, to the thumb, you know, to the rib cage. So it becomes very difficult, but you almost have to forget everything you learned. <laughs> right and, and always have that beginner's mindset that you're looking at this right. you spend a hundred thousand dollars just leave it no, yeah. <laughs> hundred thousand dollars for school just <laughs> forget about it we'll tell you what to really do yeah, like Rodney Dangerfield with that movie right yeah, it's like a gut punch a little bit right it's like okay everything yeah, you learn, yeah. but the way I look at it is like okay I don't want them to forget it because it's the foundation we're building off of so they have to have a really good foundation but they have to be taught uh, critical thinking and they have to not be limited. And to me, what I found is nothing is real till you feel it. And this is the experience I have with my patients, right? So a patient is even uh, a few tiers away from a, a skilled physical therapist, right? That just graduated, right? They, their understanding is way further um, away from a physical therapist. So if I think about how I teach them, it is constantly like having them feel it and see it, then retest it feel it and see it and retest it. And I do this, uh, a version that I do with this in the spinal manipulation courses, I talk about how the neurodynamics of the body have common sticking points. So if somebody has sciatica and they're limited with their straight leg raise, if you manipulate their C2, you can see everything glide and slide easier and you can improve their range of motion dramatically. So, and a lot of students like that, I, when I teach them that they, they hear it, they, they kind of understand it on a very superficial level, then they feel it, and then they get it. So right. it has to be a lot of lab work, you know, so it's like, here are the concepts, here's how everything connects, and let's just play. You know, work on this, retest, work on this, retest, and start to, uh, start to form the, the grand scheme of things for them and take them out of this limited scope. You know, but unfortunately, that limited scope is we're forced to practice that way because that's how we get reimbursed. That's all the time we have for those patients. That's what the patients are complaining of the most. You know, so if, if I only have 15 minutes with a patient, their neck is on fire and it's going to take me 15 minutes to put out that fire. OK, I got to work on their neck. I don't have the time, right. the resources to justify working on all these other body parts. Right. The big toes are coming that day. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's really good stuff. Yeah. So the and model, you the do, model you know. the problem, like the model that we all work in, it's very difficult to teach people all these things and have them integrated with the current model that we use. And the only way for them right. to have a chance of doing that, they have to have very effective treatment tools that they can utilize quickly. You know, and spinal right. manipulation has been 
one of the biggest, uh, um, uh, I think, learning tools that I've had to allow me to start to do many things all at the same time. Right. Right, cool. So great stuff, you know, with you and I, you know, we've talked over the time, we could probably talk for hours, so I don't want to yeah. we'll keep it, you know, keep it short, but I totally appreciate your time. You know, if we could probably even after this, we'll talk more about all the other stuff you're doing. It is, you know, fantastic. And, you know, can't wait to see you guys come out here again. Maybe we'll, all, we'll have to take the whole company out to San Diego. But uh, <laughs> we're all yeah, yeah, bus. But, and, uh, and, yeah, and we're can... looking forward to it. And I said, you know, definitely looking forward to seeing you again and doing some stuff. But it'll be, uh, yeah. it'll be fun. Yeah, same here, Rob. Anytime. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. And uh, it's a pleasure to be on, on your podcast. And just for anybody who's watching, you know, we have the, like you said, the Doc Physio platform. And I encourage people just take the test and see what kind of treatment plans show up. And if they need it, then they can subscribe for it. But for all the professionals out there, um, uh, we have our uh, academy as well, too. So we have the spinal manipulation course. And I know right now it's difficult for me to go out there and uh, teach people in person, but we have our automated online courses. So spinal manipulation is one of them. So if anybody's interested in learning it, they can, uh, they can check that out as well too. Good. I'm going to go take my test now see what I got, see where it's all coming from. Sure you match up, see how it fits. <laughs> That's it. All right. Good to see you. I'll talk to you soon. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you.